Have you been trying to follow tutorials to build your no-code app on Bubble, but finding that you're not really getting anywhere? Well, there's a reason for that. And in this video, we're going to talk about what that reason is so that you can make a change. And then we're going to go through four things you can do to help move your no-code app forward faster and better. So make sure you stick around for those. If you're new around here, my name is Kristen. I'm the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can start their app-based business or grow their existing business all without coding. And if you want to learn more about that, subscribe to our channel for new videos every single week. So let's be honest here. If you've been following tutorials or trying to clone different features to build your app in Bubble and you're not getting anywhere, it kind of sucks, right? It's frustrating. It makes you want to pull out your hair when you've tried something a million times and you're doing it exactly the same way as the person you're following is doing it, but it's still not working for you. Now, if you've watched any of our own tutorials on YouTube, or maybe you're in our VIP membership where there are over 350 tutorials on Bubble, or maybe you're in our Fast Track course or have our API video series, and you're thinking, Kristen, what the heck are you talking about? Don't you also provide tutorials to learn how to build your app on Bubble. And yes, you would be right. We do. But there is a difference in following training and following a tutorial or cloning a feature and trying to really just kind of copy and paste step by step. So if you're following these tutorials and not getting anywhere, chances are you are probably just trying to copy what the other person is doing. And that's just not what development is about. If there's one single thing you take away from this video, I want it to be that development, no code, coding, whatever it is, Development is really about problem solving and troubleshooting. So you can build a feature and copy what someone is doing step by step by step, and, and you can literally replicate it. But if you don't know how to troubleshoot, or if you don't understand the why that is going on beneath the what in that tutorial, then you're never going to be able to scale what you're doing. You're never going to be able to iterate. You're never going to be able to add on. You're never going to be able to handle your app, really, if something goes wrong, if there's an issue. You have to be able to troubleshoot. That is really the key to development. So for example, I mentioned our VIP membership. So this is a monthly subscription that we have, and there are over 350 tutorials in there now and, and new ones added every single week where you can go and you can learn how to build different features. And yes, these are tutorials that are step by step that say, hey, this is what you need to do to build this. But the approach that we really are intentional about taking is making sure that the why is there too. And honestly, in some of our videos, for example, if something is done incorrectly, then we'll talk about why that is done incorrectly and leave it there versus cutting it out because those pieces are so incredibly important because there is a 1 million percent chance that when you are copying some sort of tutorial or you're just copying what someone else is doing, something will go wrong in your app. Something will look different. Something will act differently. And if you don't understand how to notice these things, identify them or narrow down the root cause, then you're going to get nowhere with your app. So it's great if you can build a feature or a functionality, but if you can't turn around and maybe build that for a different use case, or maybe build it with a slight variation, if you can't you know, take what you're learning and implement it more widely, then you're going to have a hard time growing your app. Now, you might be thinking, well, if I have to learn all this other stuff and know how to troubleshoot, isn't that going to mean I'm going to have to spend longer building my app? And yes, you would be right. It will take longer to build your app if you are actually taking the time to understand why you are doing what you're doing. But Think of that as an upfront time investment. If you build your app now by copying the steps someone else is taking, and that is how your entire app is constructed, once you bring users on board and you start getting feedback and you start finding bugs and issues and they start wanting iterations and updates that you can't find 
step-by-step -step tutorials for, then you are going to be stuck and you're not going to know what to do. But if you take a different approach and you spend a little bit more time earlier in your development to actually skill build and not just copy, but understand why you're doing what you're doing, that's an upfront investment. Is it going to take a little bit longer? Well, sure. But after that, forevermore, your development is going to be so much faster and you're going to be so much more self-sufficient. So use tutorials. They're great learning tools. Otherwise, we wouldn't create them and provide them. But make sure that you are understanding how to troubleshoot, how to problem solve, and you're taking an analytical mindset as you work your way through them. All right, so now we're going to talk about four ways for you to learn how to better troubleshoot and problem solve as you are using and implementing these tutorials. So the first one is to understand how to use the debugger in Bubble. This is going to let you identify root causes of problems. So if you're building your app and you go and you test your app, which you should be doing along the way, and you find that something's not working in the way it should, well, the first thing you have to do is narrow down the problem and find the root cause. Now, oftentimes, if you don't take the time to do this, you will see an issue and maybe think you're solving it, but actually just be putting a patch on top of something that is technically still broken underneath. And you don't want to do that because when you create this kind of patchy app, it's not going to perform well and it's not going to scale well. And so you have to take the time to find the root cause of any issues that are coming up. So when you're using your debugger, it's going to allow you to better do that. So what I want you to do when you're building your app and you're following these tutorials is constantly be testing and use the debugger whenever you find issues that come up and make sure you're solving those issues and practice finding the root cause and fixing the root cause. Because when you do that, it's going to proactively eliminate lots of other future issues that could come up. Now, I'm not going to go into how to use the debugger in this video because we have another video on that. So keep watching this video right now. But once you're done, go ahead and, and click over to the video on how to use the debugger because that's going to help you with that. OK, now I just mentioned this or alluded to it a little bit in the previous one. But the second thing that I want you to do is you're following these tutorials and building your app is to solve issues as they arise. So when you're working in your bubble editor and you see the red issue count start ticking up, don't let it keep climbing without addressing it. I've seen people rack up dozens and even hundreds of issues and then try to go back and solve them all at once. But not only are you creating a real mess for yourself when you're doing that, but you are going to make it harder for yourself to understand, number one, how to identify problems, and number two, how to get to the root cause like we talked about and solve the root cause. Okay, because what's probably happening when you have dozens or even hundreds of issues is you have some core underlying problems that are causing all of these other issues to kind of web out. And if you start picking them off one by one, then again, it's going to kind of muddy the waters as you try to narrow down to that root cause. So solve the issues as they come up. It's going to make your process a whole lot easier just as a developer. It's going to clean up your editor experience and your development experience, but it's also going to help you build the skills because if you see the issues pop up and you address them as they come, you can also connect those issues with exactly what you're doing in that moment. If you go back to your issue list and there are 50 issues on there, well, you're not going to be able to connect those to the past you know, two weeks of development you've been doing. So make sure you're checking them as they pop up so that you can see, okay, when I did this, then this happened. And now you know and you can make that connection. And that is building knowledge. Okay, number three, and this one is one of my favorites. Don't be afraid to break things in your app. I see this happen a lot. People can be really timid about trying things in their app. So you might be following a tutorial, but feel a little bit afraid to go outside, to like color outside of the lines, really, uh, because you're not sure what's going to happen and you don't want to make something worse. But do it anyways, right? Get your hands on things, break things, and don't be afraid of it because you can always fix them. You can always fix them 
if you start building these troubleshooting skills early on and by getting your hands on things and intentionally breaking things, it's actually going to help you. It sounds counterintuitive, but until you start putting your hands into your editor, um, so to speak, then you're not going to find these, these issues that come up or you're not gonna find what does work. Okay, so number four, and now that we're talking through these, a, a fifth one has popped into mind, so I'm gonna add a bonus one onto the end for you. But number four is to remember that it's important to keep your app's bigger picture needs in mind. So when you are following a tutorial where you're just copying what someone else is doing, or maybe you're cloning something that you're seeing, well, you're not thinking about your app as a whole. You're only thinking about this one really contained step. But you need to be thinking about your app as a whole and really what it is providing to your users, because what I've often found happens when you're following tutorials or, or you're cloning things is you end up building the exact functionality that you are copying makes sense right but what you are copying is not taking into account your app and your users bigger picture needs so oftentimes you're actually going to end up with functionality and these maybe granular sub features or, or tertiary features that your users just don't need. And I see this happen so often, but you might see something built on a tutorial that is sort of similar to what you want to build, but it's the only thing you can find to copy. So you copy it and along the way you think, well, this feature is kind of cool anyway. So, I'm, you know, I'm going to build it into my app. That is not the approach you want to take when you're building your app. You want to be doing every single thing along the way with your development and your launch with intention. And when you copy things from tutorials and, and you leave them in without taking your app's bigger picture view really into mind, then you're not being intentional and therefore you're not ultimately building the app your users need. So make sure you're constantly keeping your bigger picture needs and your overarching app in mind. And that is going to really just prompt you to develop those troubleshooting skills even further, because then you can start to veer outside of those step-by-step -step tutorials. You can use them as a learning tool and as a way to develop the features, but you can understand how to mold those features to your needs and your users' needs. Okay, bonus one here. Number five is when you think about building anything on Bubble, and honestly, this is true no matter what platform or tool you're using, the platform is not smart, right? You are a smart person and the platform provides you with lots of capabilities to channel your insight into it. But the platform itself isn't smart and therefore it doesn't understand what you want it to do intuitively. It doesn't understand what you're thinking intuitively. And so you really have to understand how to talk to the platform you're using, to Bubble. You have to understand how Bubble thinks in order to create exactly what you want to create. Because you can't just say, hey, Bubble, I want you to let users fill in this form and then send me and them the results. That, that one simple thing is going to need to be broken down into dozens and dozens of little steps because everything that you want Bubble to do has to be programmed really, really incrementally. Now, I say programmed, obviously we're not coding, but hopefully you understand what I mean. I should also say that testing and fixing and troubleshooting is a major part of development. And I often see people coming into the no-code space and all they think about is building. So constructing and, and seeing their app come to life, right? But they forget or they just don't anticipate that there are going to be equal amounts of time spent testing and troubleshooting and fixing. And that can be really frustrating when you're not expecting it. You can think that you're just not doing things correctly, um, or maybe just that you're not 
good at it, but that's not the case. The troubleshooting and the error handling, the breaking, the fixing, it's just a part of development. And that's why you, you can't just build a feature. I mean, you can, but I don't want you to just build a feature. I want you to understand why certain things are happening. And I want you to understand how to troubleshoot so that when you apply that feature or those steps to your own app and something happens, well, you can fix it. Or if you want to change it a little bit, well, you can. If you want to follow this approach, and I really encourage you to, and you want to get access to hundreds of tutorials that help you build these skills, head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash VIP hyphen membership. So VIP membership, the link is in the description below and check that out. You can get access to, like I said, hundreds of tutorials and really just content that is going to help you not only build your app, but also build your skills so that you can be more self-sufficient with your app. And that's what we want for you. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash VIP hyphen membership to get access to those. I hope you found this helpful and valuable. And if you did, if you can give this video a like, it would help us out a ton as we try to help more and more people in the no-code space. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.